Hello everybody, this is Budrich and let me show you now uh, how I use uh, that uh, dirt hack I showed you in the last video, sending commands to, to terminals. I, I had a plan for what I wanted to do with it and now I have done it. Check this out. Uh, let me turn on the notification script there. So open pale moon here, super F. As you can see, when I do so, I, I open it in, in my from a terminal like this. Uh, so, so this, I actually execute a terminal with just a command pale moon and then that will spawn the window pale moon and then I have some window rules and stuff in i3 to set it at the position I want. Cool, nothing special about that really. And then maybe I, I would like to open Sublime. Open that guy up here. Uh, and right now it's uh, uh, my test uh, blog post here and now I can also because to, to focus and launch uh, Pale Moon the web browser I press super F here so if it's not running it will start it if it is running it will focus it if I press super shift F it will execute uh, Bashugo here with uh, the preview option and here you can see now it started a new terminal and this terminal uh, doesn't start Pale Moon. What it does is it will uh, 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 start the Hugo server uh, to build uh, the, the live preview of the Hugo page. And then it opens a new instance of Pale Moon here. Uh, you can hide the, the title bar here so you can see and it's called preview that window here with, with the, uh, the, the, the page. If there is a page open in Sublime, it will open uh, that page, or a page, you know, a, a blog post here, for instance, this one here. Um, I have some more test uh, pages here, so here, here's another one. If I now press Super Shift F, it will just focus the browser window. So the browser window now have focus, but it doesn't change uh, URL or anything. But it actually sends the URL to, to this page, uh, to the clipboard, so I can just... Um, since I'm using this uh, 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 modal uh, navigation thing extension pentadactyl with my pale moon, I can just press P and it will open uh, uh, the URL that I have in the uh, uh, clipboard or, or in the, you know, the Linux clipboard, Unix, what, what, what's it called? Primary selection. So then it changed to this URL if I want that. And I. I like this setup, you know, to have uh, the preview window open like this and then Sublime here. That's kind of the default uh, way I like to, to have it when I'm developing. I know it might look weird to have such a small window here, but most of the time you, you are just focusing on, on a small uh, object on, on the home page that you're customizing, you know. For example, maybe I'm changing icons or something here. But I also like to have it split uh, like I'm having here now with, with this uh, terminal so I can change uh, the width of, of the site and see how, how the different responsive rules I have set works, you know, depending on how large the window is. I also made this little JavaScript uh, thing here that displays the, the actual viewport uh, size, whatever. And sometimes maybe it, it's even more convenient to, to have it so I can see see it in almost full full screen, you know. But I could also um, have have a layout that would look something. I can just move this window here if I wanted that. Maybe move Sublime there. Do something like this, you know. Uh, Super Shift F there and ha have a layout like like this. Maybe is good. I don't know. And then I can preview here how that will look. Whatever. So that's what I'm using that uh, um, mm -mm, script for here now. Because now, if I uh, because now, uh, as you can see there, as soon as I, I edit the home page here, it updates uh, uh, the, the actual site because that's what this server uh, Hugo server thing does. But if I would close this, because sometimes you do that and sometimes it, it kind of crashes if you have a, a, a syntax error sometimes in the Hugo code, then the, the server will stop. 
But let's say I, I stop it manually, I need to, to do something on the command line because another benefit of this is that I will have a terminal uh, with the directory uh, open here with, with a, a, a home page project root, you know. Um, but now if I press super shift F, you'll see then it ex actually uh, execute that server command and that is done with, with that technique that I showed in the last video. Uh, sending commands to, to a specific terminal. So I'm kind of happy with how, how that turned out. It's, uh, it feels really good actually. Mm. And when I was uh, um, doing these things, um, I also uh, made, made a little overview or what to call it on... on um, and also another thing is that it will set, I always have my, my containers tabbed by default, but when I execute this uh, preview window, I actually set that window to be uh, horizontally split instead. Um, so I can do this. It's only, only because of this. But sometimes, you know, you, you don't want that either. And, and I could also, of course, send this to, to a, its own dedicated workspace to really see how it would look like in, 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 in a normal, uh, uh, setup. Here we can also see the quotes here uh, is imported to, to the, in, in the sidebar. And it should be different quotes for, for each page here. Uh, I guess we get back to that some, some other time. How that works and, and more in, in uh, looking more at the code here of the home page. Uh, but not today because today I thought let's, let's have a closer look at uh, my terminal uh, executing scripts here. Because I, I um, I uh, uh, updated my my script that that I execute or launch terminals with. This is a script that I keep uh, on my private uh, on a private GitHub uh, repo, so it's not a public script. Uh, and the reason for this is, um, let's see if we can find it. I think I have it in. Yeah, it's probably in i3 merge here. Um, here i3 term two. The reason I don't want to, to make this public is because it's uh, it's like it's very much URXVT focused and also uh, URXVTC. I, I thought maybe I should take some time and make this like... Uh, it's, re it's almost impossible to make it terminal agnostic, so to speak, so it will work for any terminal. What you have to do is, is kind of uh, hard code different uh, commands for uh, depending on which terminal to use. But it's not like impossible and it's not like there are one million terminals. It, it's probably fine to do it for, for the four mo most common terminals and it's, it, it should be enough for, for like 99% of, of, of uh, terminal emulator users. But I have never done that, I just use this urxvtc. Um, and, and, and this command here, it doesn't really uh, send any commands and, or anything. The only thing uh, I added here now is this, uh, to set that the all, all terminal windows will have the window title uh, set to, to this TTY value here. I also added some, some other cool stuff here. For example, if I execute a terminal, uh, a, a, a tiled terminal, uh, a, a tiled no-name terminal, so uh, kind of speak, uh, here, auto-tile option. Then it will uh, test here to see if it's in the A or in the C, C container. If it is, it will set the font to large, otherwise it will use the default font. Uh, so, and that means if I do here auto-tile uh, terminal here, you see, it just opens the terminal like it usually does here uh, in the same uh, container. And the same thing here, it opens the terminal here. But if I do this here in the C container, you'll see it opens the terminal, but now it have a large font because I, I, I actually prefer that in, in this C container, which has become my main container, so to speak. So it makes more sense to have, have like a larger uh, font there. And the same goes for, um, I know that this there, so, this terminal, this is the Hugo terminal now, now, now it blanked out here, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's also interesting. If I close this window here, 
like that. And then I open super shift return here. That will open uh, a terminal here in the C container. And, and this is not a no name uh, terminal. This is the term small. Uh, for some reason it's called term small. And it's always located here in, in the A container. But it will also always set the font to, to large. Uh, but check this out. When I execute super shift F, you know, to, to start the web server, it will actually uh, shrink the font size. Because when I'm doing the server here, I actually want a smaller font, but it keeps, it's the same terminal. Uh, it's, it's still the same terminal, the, the small term terminal here, or term small. So, so I can still use the same key. And that was something I really wanted here. Uh, so I don't have to, then I always know that this Hugo terminal is always running in the super shift return terminal, so to speak. So I don't know, maybe I should, should um, as you can see, it's not a big script, it's just like uh, 40 lines here. Um, to do this, um, so maybe I should give this a little bit more work here and, and, and see if I can make it um, uh, more, more terminal agnostic. I, I'm not really sure what the kids use these days, I guess it's, many people use ST terminal. Um, but I would guess that URXVT should be like at least uh, the second most popular. Then I guess it's hard to say, you know, uh, in an in i3 context also because this is completely i3 specific. It's no no point making this window manager specific or agnostic. And those who use i3. I would guess that URXVT is probably the, the most common. URXVT, Xterm, ST, then I don't know the other ones, you know, uh, Kitty Terminal I've seen some people use, I don't know. Yeah, and it's not a big deal, you know, all I have to do is research uh, what, what the, if they have an option to set the instance name, which I know that many terminal have. Uh, if there is a way to set, uh, uh, to pass like a font list. This can be done uh, in another way, otherwise. Uh, so, so, so it's fine. And uh, also how to execute commands, because some use this E option, some use some other way. But it's like small uh, modifications depending on the terminal emulator. So, so it should actually not be impossible to create a, a, a more universal version of this and if i do then i can release it for you my bud fans i don't know weird video just wanted to show you uh, this thing um, now there are no excuses for me anymore now it's time to, to really wrap this uh home page uh, up here i'm kind of happy with with uh a lot of the layout here now. I would like to make it a little bit more uh, um, interesting, maybe add some, some background pattern or something. It looks a little bit <laughs> too too static or, or how to say it, but really like how this uh, uh, responsive stuff works now with it because I'm using Tailwind CSS and it makes these things so easy to do. You can change like individual uh, uh, padding Look at the font size here in the sidebar. It changes depending on the on the size and things like that. You can see it's it's extremely easy to do it with, with uh, um, Tailwind CSS. Um, yeah, so maybe that could be like uh, it's a bit cringe to say say uh, say that uh, here's some homework, but uh, a little primer here, uh, search for Tailwind CSS, uh, and then you will find the Tailwind CSS page here. Mm. And then I recommend you, you watch these introductionary screencasts here. They are actually very good screencasts, this, this is great. Just watch this first uh, part here, and I really recommend you following along. It will take you about an hour, and you will actually build uh, a page with this uh, 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 Tailwind CSS thing here. He uses uh, 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 VS Code and, and this weird thing here. Uh, whatever, I don't even want to say what it is. I don't want to give them any, because it's a commercial product. Uh, 
whatever. Whatever. It doesn't matter, you know, if someone uses JavaScript or Electron editors, you know, it's up to them. What's interesting is, is this, uh, 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 the techniques here and, and this Tailwind CSS. That's, that's very, very uh, uh, cool things. I, I highly recommend it or, uh, and I, I will, I think I will use this for a long time in, in most of my upcoming uh, web projects, whatever they may be. Uh, because it's so fast uh, to design and and uh, work with this and much less headaches than normal CSS so to speak but I don't want to go into any details here exactly what it is how it works uh, if, if you're interesting look at uh, these screencasts here are probably the best the best uh, resource for that uh, or search on on YouTube I, I know what is called tra traversy media or something made made a very short uh, introduction to this that that's even more uh, uh, basic so to speak uh, let's see here tailwind css yeah this is the guy adam wathan here uh, he have his own youtube channel also which is really cool where he he he, he builds sites sometimes it's like he creates a site, but often many of his videos he he replicates a uh, uh, already um, existing site. Let's see if we can find one really quickly here. Uh, whatever. Uh, but 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 it's a very good idea actually to to. To replicate an all like for example YouTube just build a, a, a copy of YouTube you know you, you don't have to build the logic of course and you don't have to create like a, a back-end video uh, streaming server but you could just replicate the design it's like a lot of things going on here and it's not impossible to, to do this at all and it's a very good way to learn uh, uh, web design um, Whatever, I, knew, I thought he had a lot of those types of videos here, but maybe it was on another channel or something. Whatever, uh, but that wasn't what I really wanted to... Here it is, Traverse in Media, you know, it's it's like this uh, very, very famous, uh, or very, very famous, but one of the biggest like entry-level web dev uh, uh, channels, you know. He made a, a short year 30 minute Tailwind CSS crash course, uh, which is also a good introduction. Uh, but I actually recommend the, these videos more because here, following just this first, first part here, takes you an hour, you will build an actual site and you will use a lot more. Yeah, since Adam is doing these videos himself, he, he really understands how to explain what's going on and, and what it is, uh, whatever. Man, that really, I don't, I have no idea where I am now in, in this video. What it was just supposed to be me showing this, uh, uh, uh script here or whatever. Um, uh, you know, this background here, I know it's, it might be, uh, the best, uh, desktop wallpaper in the history of, uh, desktop wallpapers. I know. And uh, I guess uh, all of you are asking yourself, where did you find this amazingly cool wallpaper, Badrich? Let me tell you, I found it uh, at a very odd location. Uh, I installed, let's see now, if I can find it here. Yes, here, Project M-Pulse Audio. I installed this package from uh, Pacman. Pacman SS Project um, uh, maybe I installed both of these. Uh, and Project M is a music visualizer uh, which uses 3D accelerated iterative image based rendering. I, I don't even want to start it here, it probably will bork up everything here because I don't know. 
Okay, it, it's one of these things, you know. It's probably very shoppy here now on, on your screens. But you can... This is interesting. I, I remembered it having some ugly menus and stuff, but maybe that was when I executed that project demo. Whatever. In, in this uh, directory here, user share project M. Uh, I just open because that's uh, what I do, you know, I open directories. Um, just to see what, what was in there. There I find found some uh, uh, images actually. And one of those images was that uh, uh, extremely cool old school uh, 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 wallpaper. And some other weird tiled wallpapers here. And what is this? I don't even know, you know. Uh, but that's where I found it. And, and as you can see here, dot milk. So if you are, uh, uh, if you remember, on Winamp, it was uh, the good old uh, uh, llama, it really whips the llama's ass, you know. Um, it had this built-in visualizer thing called Milk Drop. And this is like a Milk Drop for Linux or something, I don't really know. Uh, but in, in that directory, there were some cool uh, wallpapers. I think I, I, I used some of the tiles as well here. Uh, here, this one I also found really, really good. Great wallpaper. Uh, and this one. Maybe uh, it's kind of nice also. And this lizard, lizard scales. They are watching. This was another one. It's uh, unusable. They were extremely low risk, but but some of them actually looked even looked better, uh, like like the one I was using. You know, this one. You see, this is low risk, but it still looks fine when it's scaled up in a way. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.